In a secure network, the publisher is streaming multicast data onto the network. The subscribers are monitoring and listening for the data. Everything appears to be secure. What happens if we have a security breach? The intruder could, in effect, publish incorrect or damaging data. The subscribers would not know any better. The subscribed data appears to be coming from the appropriate source. What assurance does the subscriber have that the data is from the intended source? To ensure the subscribers are getting the right data, the standard specifies that when multicasting over IP networks, IGMP version 3, or Internet Gateway Management Protocol, must be used. IGMP version 3 varies from earlier versions of IGMP in that the subscribers to the multicast address are filtered on the source IP address of the publisher. This is referred to as source filtering. Source filtering allows the routers to select the appropriate path to deliver the multicast instead of delivering to all possible paths. IGMP version 3 is used on both IP version 4 and IP version 6 networks. IGMP version 3 operates within the substation's LAN to the local router observing the IGMP traffic. To ensure the subscribers are still active, the local multicasting router notifies the subscriber to confirm whether the subscriber is still online. If there is no response from the subscriber, the communication link is broken. A protocol called Protocol Independent Multicast, also known as PIM, monitors the networks to make sure that the subscribers are still requesting data. It has an automatic breakdown feature which means it will drop the link to a specific, to a specific subscriber if the requests stop. The technical report 61850-90-5 defines on how the routable goose must be secured with a wide area network. First it defines a secure hash algorithm. It uses an SHA-2 known as secure hash algorithm version 2 hash code which is used for message authentication and integrity similar to a CRC that places a tamper detection on the message. Next it defines an encryption algorithm. The one currently being used is called Advanced Encryption Standard AES. The message is locked by the publisher and the subscriber needs the key to unlock it. The technical report also defines a key management system. Using RFC 6407, the group domain of interpretation, the system manages the keys to all members in the group, meaning the publishers and subscribers. This key is also incorporated when generating hash and encryption algorithms. Next, it also defines the group members are issued a certificate once they've been verified for authorization and authenticated as valid members in the group. With all the security defined, the Rotable Goose is encapsulated in a very neat data packet. 61850-90-5 provides the capability to convey messages in a data packet known as the Session Protocol Data Unit, or otherwise known as SPDU. This supports secure tunneling of the Ethernet-based Goose to facilitate easier exchange between substation and control centers. It has two portions. It has a header and session user. Let's quickly review each part of the SPDU. The goose identifier indicates what type of payload there is, whether this is a goose or a sampled value. The SPDU length is the size of the SPDU, header content, and payload. The SPDU number is a value used to detect duplicates or out of order packets. This is maintained by the sender and starts with zero and increments with each subsequent SPDU. The version, this is the version of the 62850-90-5 protocol that is being used. The time of current key is a security attribute which represents the time at which the current signature and encryption key was first used. Time to next key is a security attribute that represents the time before another key is put into use for signature and encryption. It is recommended that the key distribution center changes the symmetric keys used for signatures and encryption at least every 48 hours. The value is specified in minutes. A minimum time to next key is expected to be 30 minutes. This value should be used for updates of the keys in situations where the current key has been compromised. The security is not used. 
Next is the key ID, which is assigned by the key distribution center, key management, and is used to lock and unlock the message and is unique during the lifetime of the security association. The length is the length of the payload data. The payload is the goose message, including the, the simulation bit, the application ID, etc. And finally, the signature, this is a secure HMAC, which is a key hash message authentication code, which is like a CRC. It's a cyclic redundancy check, which is used for authentic authentication and integrity checks. In this section, we'll review all the components that are used in a secure readable message configuration. First, we have a key distribution center, KDC. This is a system that is responsible for providing keys to the users in a network that share sensitive or private data. Each time a connection is established between two devices in the network, they both request the KDC to generate a unique password, which can be used by the system users for verification. The protocol used to access the KDC is known as GDOI, which is the Group Domain of Interpretation. The GDOI protocol is, provides a secure key exchange between the KDC and the devices. SEP is a simple certificate enrollment protocol is used to communicate with the certificate authority that is responsible for issuing and managing certificates to the device. And finally, OSCP is the online certificate status protocol, which is used to communicate with the registration authority to verify and validate the publisher and subscriber certificates. Here's a simplified sequence of events to establish secure communication among Routable Goose publisher and subscribers. There are two major exchanges going on. One is the certification, which is used to authenticate all devices exchanging keys. And two, security followed by the distribution of symmetric keys used by the publisher or subscriber for signature encryption. So we begin with step one, and this is to provide the Argoose security support for devices that is dedicated to obtaining a certificate. The devices request the next 509 certificate from the Certificate Authority, the CA, using the Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol. Step two, the Certificate Authority verifies the users and signs the certificate and sends it to the devices. Once the certificate is obtained, the publisher or subscribers establish a connection with the KDC server using the GDY protocol. The devices share their certificates with the KDC server and the devices request the KDC certificates. The KDC and the devices verify each other's certificates. Next, each party, the KDC and publisher and subscribers, contact the registration authority using the online certificate status protocol. They send their own certificate and the other device's certificate for validity as well as revocation status. So what I'm saying here is that each, each device, the subscriber, a publisher, also has a copy of the KDC certificate as well. And they send both copies for verification to the, uh, to the registration authority. If the verification succeeds, the devices contact the KDC for a symmetric key. The KDC sends a symmetric key to the devices. These keys are used for signing and encrypting the Routable Goose message. As per the standard, these keys need to be updated at least once every two days through a process called rekeying. This can be done either through the pull mechanism, where each, key, where each device repeats steps three to six, or a push mechanism where the KDC server sends the new keys to all members of the group, usually in one multicast message. The KDC server is the one that decides when the keys will be changed. And finally, the Argus communications commands using the symmetric keys. The certificates that were requested during the secure key exchange have a breakdown similar to this. First, we have a serial number. This is used to uniquely identify the certificate to distinguish it from other certificates. We have a subject, which is the name of the identity the certificate is issued to. We have a signature algorithm. This is the algorithm used by the issuer to sign the certificate. We have a signature, the actual signature to verify that it came from the issuer. The issuer is the name of the entity verifying information and issuing the certificate. So this is the certificate authority. We have valid from, so this is the date the certificate is first valid from. 
The valid two is the expiry date. Key usage is the purpose of the key, of the public keys, whether it's in, in cipher, a signature, or a certificate, certificate signing. Next for the public key, this is the authentication of the identity to ensure that you say who you are. Or I should say, you ensure you are who you say you are. Then the fingerprint algorithm. This is the algorithm used to hash the, the public key certificate and create the encryption. And the last one is the fingerprint, which is the code to unlock the certificate.